Welcome to the Handyman 406 channel. My name's Kerry. Stick around, we got some things for you. Seems like the only way I get motivated these days is to make a YouTube video. Anyway, it was, we're here in John John's shop and uh, we're gonna start doing some welding and some cutting and fabricating metal. We're gonna, we're gonna build a wind generator and it's not gonna just be any old wind generator. It's gonna be one. It's gonna work with an ordinary, slightly modified car alternator the doubters said you couldn't do it. I'm saying you can. We're going to show it right now. So anyways, you know, the traditional method of using a collar alternator would entail something like this. This is a permanent magnet alternator uh, rotor I built using um, neodymiums uh, embedded in resin. I turned the shaft out of uh, on the lathe. Um, out of a bolt, I think. Anyways, something like that would fit into something like this. And But there's a real flaw with these. There's a real problem with using these. Um, seems like no matter how I construct these, there always seems to be some cogging, uh, even though I have these offset. Now, what I'd like to do in the future, and maybe we'll make a video about that, that's why you need to subscribe to my channel so you can catch things like this when they come across, is I'd like to make this in two halves. I'd like to make one half with magnets set in resin and the other with magnets set in resin. And I'd like to make it where the two halves can turn. And that way we can get the adjustment of the offset perfect where there's as little as cogging as possible. Why is that important? Because the wind generator blades that will be effective that will generate the most power are going to be uh, the same blades that you're not going to have a whole lot of startup torque um, and I've explained that in some of my earlier videos they're old videos they're poor quality but if you watch them you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about anyways okay so apparently my work table is a table saw today um, I'm not going to be welding on it, so I guess it won't hurt it too bad. Anyways, first thing we need to do is get this hinge welded on. Anyways, I'm not too sure about this hinge business. Um, I guess it had like a nylon bushing in there and it got warm and then now it's all floppy. 
but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this thing together anyways. Yeah, what the hell, what's the worst thing that can happen? It could just blow up. Well, this is the basic idea of what we got going on here. And uh, hopefully you can see that okay. Anyways, so when the prop is on here, what happens is the wind blows and it pushes back on this alternator. And we're gonna make some copper connections up here. Each one of these connections have to be isolated from one another. And uh, what that's gonna do is we're gonna bring the positive off of the back of this up to here. And then we're gonna bring a wire from here to the field current. And then when the wind blows hard enough to make the contact, that's gonna turn the alternator on. Any of you guys fooled with alternators long enough, you know that that's one of the tricks is you don't want to leave this thing connected all the time. Anyways, I started using that stupid hinge. I'll show it to you. Yeah, so this is exactly why a regular hinge won't work. As soon as that thing got a little hot from welding, that little nylon bushing in there just melted and caused it all kind of slop. So what I did, we used three nuts and a bolt. And that keeps that slop down to a minimum because this thing's going to be going through all kinds of uh you know it's going to be torqued left right up and down and everything else uh from the wind and uh these things get pretty western when it starts blowing trust me anyways uh so yeah that's the concept uh like i said this was just an old alternator i pulled out of the truck just to fit it up here and what i've done here slides right off I just use that for a template so I can get the spacing on these things right you want to put that on there and get it all nutted up good and uh, that gives you a pretty good way of mounting these alternators but uh, in a future video in a future video we're gonna modify you don't have to do a lot of modification but we're gonna go ahead and modify one of these to make it suitable for wind power and that way you don't need to use a permanent magnet core like this and in my opinion this has a lot more efficiency in the end and you'll see why um, we're gonna this is something I made some years back and uh, this is what we're gonna mount the uh, blades with it's not necessary though I'll show you how to do that without using one of these as well hey thanks for watching and if you guys like my content, please subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Hit that like button. And uh, all right, we'll see you on the next one. This is part one. We're going to have part two.